Okay, so the next order of business is to teach you guys how to use the testing software component once you've sent tests over to AnswerRight. So when you log in, as you know, you've got conferences, testing, and so forth. Your user might look a little bit different because I'm in administrator mode, and I don't mean to confuse you if your username is a little bit different. But here we go. I'm going to click testing instead of conferences this time. And again, I have access to all of the districts. So I'm going to go into District 5. And the first thing I want to call your attention to is this is the URL that you're going to give to the students and the proctors for when they take the test. Every single URL is based on which district you're in, and every single schedule is set up by district. That's why the URL is different. So this is the URL you give to the students for testing. For the proctors, for them to log in and to print out tickets and so forth, it's a different URL. They have different privileges, different access, and so forth. So you obviously do not want to give this link to the students. They can't do much with it unless they have the username and password, but still, they don't need to know what it is. So avoid giving, giving them that link. Currently, you'll see that my testing is closed. I'm going to show you how to open that up and schedule it next. But it's important to understand, again, this is the URL for the students to test, and this is the URL for the proctors to have access to print out tickets and so forth. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go into the main menu and drag down to the testing schedule. Now, we typically use a random password method for all of the students. I will tell you straight up, and we learned this the easy slash hard way last year, if the student does not input the correct password when they go to log in, I believe it gives them a strike three policy and on the third strike it kicks them out of the system and it forces you as the proctor or advisor to go in and reset their password. So make sure that you're telling the students as well as the proctors that it is case sensitive and that it is imperative that they put the right password in or the system will kick them out and it's required for the proctor to reset the passcode before they're going to be able to test. I'm going to start with the proctor schedule. When you click on this, these are set up from last year's dates. I'm going to delete a couple of them. But anyways, when you come in, you can specify when the proctor has access to the schedule and when they're allowed to go in, log in, and print out test tickets. Now, this is entirely up to you what you want to set this up to be. Currently, I have all these set up from last year, but you can add a new schedule entry, choose the date from the date pick thing here, date picker, <laughs> and come in and choose which days you're going to allow them to have access to the usernames and passwords. You can set up an opening time, and it wants you to do an hour, hour, minute, minute. So I'll do... 700 hours and not forget that and I have to include the a.m. and then for the close time that's up to you as well um, you know it depends on who's running this how strict they are with regard to this I'll go ahead and say oh five oh p.m. sorry and click save now I have an additional setup for December 29th at 2017 from 7 to 5. I can delete it, edit it, whatever I need to do very, very easily. Now it will let me go back to the testing schedule website or setup, and I can click schedule right here. Now here's where I define for the district when they're allowed to log in with the answer right URL to take the test. Now, you should not be allowing these students to take tests over the weekend unless there are extenuating circumstances and you've worked that out in your district. Obviously, you should be doing this in a proctored environment when there's a teacher watching to make sure that nobody cheats. This year, we are doing single tests for even the team members, so there really should be no talking whatsoever during these exams. So um, I don't need to lecture you on, on ethics here. Let's make sure that we're setting it up and doing it when there is a teacher or an adult present to proctor the actual process. So these are set up from my last year's setup. 
I can go in and edit. I can do a new schedule entry. I'll go ahead and do that. I believe we'll be testing the first week of January. So the open time, time for the test. Again, you have to do the hour, hour, minute, minute setup. So I'll do 0700 hours. And it does remember what you've put in before to make it simple to just adhere to that and do the same timing. Uh, typically, we test in the afternoons, but some of the schools are able to do it during their classes. So that's going to be up to you on how you set this up. I'll go ahead and put 5 p.m. just for simplicity's sake and click Save. So now currently on January the 2nd, students will be allowed to test from 7 to 5 p.m. I'm going to add one more schedule entry and add today's date so that I can show you how to set the test up. And I will say that you can test from the hours of 3 p.m. until 4 p.m. today. And click Save. And that's going to set it up so that if a user has a valid username and password and they have the link to the answer right site, they will be able to go ahead and test. And currently now, because I did say that for my district, the status has been changed from closed to open. So the next thing that I'm going to show you guys is how to send out a mass email to your proctors, giving them the information that they need in order to do their job. So here's the link for the testing. I went ahead and already copied it so that I have it for the purpose of the email. And I can leave this open while I'm doing this or come back to it as needed. So under utilities, I'm going to go to Proctor Mass Email. And I can go ahead and send it from me as the person that's sending the message. Okay, I can say a subject. If I wanted to add an attachment that has additional directions or whatever you guys do in your district, by all means, go ahead and do that. And it will let you browse out into your drive to send them. So I went in for the purpose of the tutorial and just typed some verbiage that would work. Obviously, you customize this to be whatever you want, but I wanted to show you how this works. So essentially, I have a little love note. Thank you for being a proctor. Here's the link that you'll need. So the link was copied and pasted from the previous page like I showed you earlier. You can make this an actual hyperlink by, first thing I'm going to do is copy this, come into here, click this link doodad, and set it up so that it actually functions as a link that goes to this site. Okay, you can do the same thing for this guy. You can even, I'm just going to copy it. You can use words if you want. Highlight the words in the body of the email here. Create a link out of those words and paste right here. Say OK. And this word link will actually be the hyperlink to the site. It's entirely up to you. Here's what really helps in terms of getting them their username and password in a kind of secret scroll format so that they have it in an email that they have to be responsible enough to go open and look at. You've got these two different message click doodads here for their username and password. So you can say to them straight out, here is your username. And then click this filter and it will input whatever their username is and password to access the system. You can come back over to here again, use this little doodad here, and it will input their actual password into their customized email. And then you can just simply go in and click send. And it will send to as many proctors as you have. Now it sent the email to both myself, Danielle, and John, because those are the three that we had on there. So here's my actual email. Thank you for being a proctor. It's the same verbiage that you saw. Here's my username. Here's my password to access the system. Here's the link to go out to it. So you can customize this however it works for you. But it's a definite help in that it sends them their username and password via an email. You know how this works, though. They actually have to read their email in order to get the information. Okay, we're almost at 10 minutes. That's enough for now. I will do a separate video to show you how to print out the test ticket.